Hey folks, this is August 20, Thursday, and I think this is the daily word in the crisis. I'm in the airport in Atlanta on a layover. This is my first ministry trip after the COVID shutdowns. Um, so I'm on my way to St. Petersburg, Florida, and uh, I would just say check out my Facebook page if you want to see uh, you know, where I'm going to be. It's there. I'm going to be there August 21, 22, and 23, ministering in a church. So this is a bit of a ramble today. You know, since the crisis up until now, I've been ministering just to my church pretty much, keeping, keeping my church open in defiance of government orders. I've been navigating the crisis. I've been touching people out in the world through my videos and my social media. Churches have been shut down, so there hasn't been any ministry travel this year up until now. But uh, now that I'm out in it, I'm passing through at least in uh, at least in the Denver airport this morning I was passing through eerily quiet airports spending more time among the wider population beyond Denver you know I kinda as I get out from from that the environment that I've been in these last few months I feel myself suffocated by the fear in people that's all around me and I struggle to keep my spirit clean because I hurt for people that are trapped they're just trapped in a web of lies and deceit you know, the virus is real, but these draconian measures and the constant drumbeat of fear-mongering are out of line, and they're demonically energized. In Denver International Airport this morning, before we left, the Starbucks coffee outlet, which is, you know, it's an island in the middle of the concourse, wasn't just shut down, it's covered in dust as if it had been unclean since the beginning of the crisis. And I needed that coffee, too. Big bummer. People aren't really or weren't this morning really talking to one another. No one was interacting. People are isolated from one another and the place was largely silent. And then there's the constant drone from the left-leaning news on the TV monitors in the waiting room. As I waited for our flight, it was, you know, feeding draconian fear of the virus and, and uh, you know, reports on the Denver, I mean, I'm sorry, on the Democratic National Convention. That Democratic National Convention seems to be a combination of lies and distortions about the president and his record and a big kumbaya about how Biden can unite the country. If we just elect Papa Joe, everything will suddenly be wonderful. Really? Bill Clinton lecturing the nation about appropriate conduct in the office of the presidency? That's like a strict stripper lecturing teenage girls on how to dress non-provocatively. The nation is hopelessly divided. No one has the ability to unite us. We're way beyond that, and it won't do any good to blame Donald Trump or even the Democrats. We've been headed this way for a long time. Some prophetic voices have tried to warn us, but we didn't listen. Years ago, in one or two of my books, I prophesied widening chasms in our culture and our nation, societal divides over morality, political philosophy, and more. The sides have become ever more entrenched in increasingly extreme and the more so as the nation has abandoned God and become more and more secular. Even in the church, the divisions have deepened. Charismatics versus cessationists, seeker-sensitive versus whatever you want to call those that practice extended worship, hyper-grace teachers versus holiness teachers, and on and on it goes. My heart grieves, but I'm also full of hope. While I have to deal almost daily online with people blinded to the hate they obviously carry, I also interact with a growing number of people who just want more of Jesus. They long for a deeper experience. They want to be holy. They want to be transformed in the image of our Lord. They hunger for strong leadership and they struggle with their frustrations that there seems to be so little of that. They don't have, they don't have all the answers or even know how to define what they feel in their hearts, but they know the genuine when they see it and they want more desperately. Jesus will answer them. It might take a while, but I see a new generation of uncompromising leadership full, full of the Father's heart in Jesus, unafraid to stand up in power, germinating like seeds just breaking through the soil. I've spent a lot of time, um, I've, spent, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time recently on the phone with some of them. They're planting new ministries. They're planting new churches with renewed and passionate vision for reaching the lost. 
they are pastor prophets and prophet pastors who speak the word of the Lord with boldness while they nurture, train, and release the flock into ministry. I see others that are renewing older congregations, sometimes against forces that resist change. It takes strength and it takes courage. But the groundwater is rising, it's coming. The outpouring of the last days, the greatest since Pentecost, will break over us for the willing and for the laid down lovers of God. Well, that's my airport rant as I spend some time laid over in Atlanta on my way to Florida. Blessings everyone and have a great day.